Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to the fifth installment of our Staying Clear Through Crisis video series, where we are talking about uh, leadership in action. Uh, it was great to have such a, an esteemed panel of young men and staff. Um, but before we get into our conversation, we will begin with our libation as we do every episode. Um, this episode is actually a little bit different. We will have our panelists um, give libation as I pour into the sneak plan. So our first panelist, I know is Justice. Uh, I would like to pour libations for former pro wrestler Shai Gaspard, who's unfortunately his body was found in Venice Beach. Um, him and his son were swimming, um, and unfortunately they got hit by, uh, with a tidal wave. And instead of Shad attempting to save himself, he decided to uh, tell the lifeguard to save his son. And um, I wanted to pour libations to him. So. And we say. I say, I say, I say, I say, I say. I say. Stephon. I like to put my, I like to pour a libation for my friend Cameron. Um, he had lost his father recently to coronavirus, and I, I hope he can stay strong, him and his family. Absolutely. To Brother Cam, and we say, I say, I say, I say. I say. I say. And next we had Brother Troy. Uh, I would like to say libations for my cousin Ayana and my mentor, Mr. Gaffney. They both lost their father and I know it's a really hard time. Even though it wasn't due to coronavirus, they, it's sad that they couldn't bury them in the proper way. And we say, I say, I say, I say. I say, I say. I say. Do we have another libation from a guest? And last, I'll just pour libation again for all of those victims um, of this COVID crisis. So many individuals have lost their lives and so many individuals continue to go out there um, and put their own lives on the line as essential workers um, to ensure that we have the things that we need and we are still able to function um, as a society the best that we possibly can. So I want to pour libation for those individuals as well. And we say, all right thank you gentlemen thank you so much for participating in our libation and thank you so much for, for agreeing to participate in this fantastic conversation around leadership and action um i'll jump right in and introduce our, our esteemed guests first i'll start with mr stefan allen class of 2020 salutatorian from eagle bronx he served as an mbk fellow um, during this past school year. Next, we have Mr. Troy Williams, uh, class of 2021 from Eagle, Queens. Um, Troy is a newly inducted MBK fellow, so congratulations, Troy, uh, for, for this new honor that you are taking on. Mr. Justice Combes, class of 2021 from Eagle, Harlem, also a newly inducted MBK fellow. Congratulations to you, sir. And Mr. Gian Baez, class of 2021, um, newly inducted MBK fellow as well. Uh, welcome to the show. I'm glad that you are all here. And last but not least, we have Mr. Jason Bissonette, um, who is an educator from our Eagle Bronx School. Um, and he is also the MBK coordinator at Eagle Bronx and has served in that role um, in the, for the past two years since the program began. So thank you so much for all of you all, for all of you agreeing to be on this broadcast to provide some motivation to some of the young men um, that are listening, uh, particularly during this time of crisis. So um, as I mentioned, all of you, what you have in common is you are all MBK fellows. And I know that there are some listeners um, who are tuned in who may have heard about it, but, but they may not clearly know what MBK is or what this initiative is. So Stefan, you being the elder uh, statesman of the group, uh, could you just please explain um, what is the MBK initiative? The MBK initiative is, is, a, is a, it's called My Brother's Keeper, and it was created by Obama Johnson in February 2014. So young men of color know that in America, their dreams matter, such as other people. And then also it bridges the gap between young men of color and their dreams. So young men of color know that anything is possible. Right, right, and he launched this back in 2014. 
um, before he left office. I think that's one of the greatest things that, that he could have done. And even before we move on, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. I know we have four young men who are MBK fellows on, on the show today, um, but we actually have two other young men who are MBK fellows from the Eagle Network. And I, de I definitely wanted to acknowledge them, um, although they could not be with us. And that is Mr. Romano McKenzie from Eagle Bronx, class of 2020, um, who was also the, the school valedictorian. Um, and he served as an MBK fellow this past year and also newly inducted MBK fellow, Mr. Kareem Alcazar um, from Eagle Staten Island, who actually was on the second edition of our Staying Clear Through Crisis series. Um, so though they could not be here with us, they certainly are here with us in spirit. So Troy, um, it's a great initiative. What made you want to become an MBK fellow? Uh, I wanted to become an MBK fellow because when I first came to Eagle not too long ago, uh, I always wanted to hear other people. I wanted to hear what they had to say just as young men of color. And yeah. after a while, I realized that a lot of our stories really matched up because we're, we're all from Queens. We all have the same problems. So I wanted to branch out and meet other young men and hear their stories. Because MBK isn't just a New York initiative. There's kids from California, from Boston, from other places in just the United States that have this have problems and you can talk to them through MBK. Mm. Is that was is that what was appealing to you as well, Justice? Uh yeah, of course. Um, you know, it's good to hear other people's stories, especially people that look like us. And not just the story, just the fact that we've been given this opportunity like this because as you know, it's not as common for people who look like us to get an opportunity like this, especially, you know, founded by President Obama, you know, it's a it's a really like big dream come true. And also too, like what Troy said, just being being able to interact and be social with um, other brothers that look like us is actually it's a very good feeling. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the connection to other brothers is very important. You know, this is actually uh, an unprecedented time because the MBK program, just to give you some historical context, it started at our Eagle Bronx school two years ago and it was just one fellow. Um, Mr. Kalen Mayfield, you know, as I mentioned, he's a freshman at the University of Virginia now. Um, but since that, since that time, we now have fellows at every, um, not, um, not every Eagle, but just almost every, just about every Eagle. I think Brooklyn is the only one that does not have a fellow, and I'm sure that they'll be up next. So to have that connection across our network that you then can take beyond and connect with brothers from across the country, I think is really, really invaluable, right? So um, being a leader, obviously, is... Um, important, right, to be uh, in this program. You, you obviously have, will have to have demonstrated leadership abilities. Stefan, how did you become a fellow? How did that process unfold? Well, because of my leadership and they seen how I represented CLEAR, Mr. Bissonnette actually recommended me to be that because he saw what I had. He saw the potential I had in life and he knew that I could be something. And I just need that extra push. And, you know, the MBK would be that extra push for me. Mm -hmm. okay. And so, so the, the teacher recognized a, a talent in you and you had the confidence enough in yourself to take that leap. All right. So I actually have a question for you uh, for your younger brother, Gian, right, who's following behind yeah. you. Right? I mentioned that the MBK program started in the Bronx two years ago with Kaylin Mayfield and you and Romano followed behind Kaylin and Gian is following behind you, right? So the question that I have for you is, what advice would you have for Gian, um, being that he was he's newly inducted into the program? Don't stop. Just keep grinding and keep doing you, or keep being you. Don't try to be like. Don't try to be like others. Do what you feel like you're comfortable doing, and just be you. Express yourself. Right. And, and that's what leadership is, right? It's having the confidence enough in yourself and then others will, will follow. So, so Troy, so again, you know, being a leader is something that's very important in this program. Um, can you tell me a time when you demonstrated leadership in your own school community? Well, uh, there's been many times. So like, I believe when we had a black history, black history uh, event, I would ha I had to take care of a lot of things behind the scenes and had to lead a lot of stuff whether it's, it was uh, in the video visuals ready for the slideshows so that everything can run smoothly and I had to lead that and just be work behind the scenes and that's one of the most important things you have to as a leader you have to be able to work behind the scenes 
and do stuff when people aren't looking. That's that's just character. That's just like the basic of having a great character. That uh, a lot of teachers told me, and that's is that's just one of the things that I was why I had to be. A, Okay. Okay. And 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 how important is it uh, that you work well with others, Justice, to be a good leader? Um, it's it's important to uh, work well with others because it would uh, well. I feel like one, it will be it will lead to better chemistry. I be I believe because in order to be a leader, I feel like you also have to have um, better chemistry with um, the people that you're leading, which are other fellows, and also just like everything. Hopefully, everything is like natural. Everything with like everything would be smooth and never, never, never nothing bumpy. I just want, I just feel like it's a, you know, just good chemistry, everything natural, just good chemistry in order for you to get along. Okay. Gian, do you have anything you need, you want to add to that? No, they basically summed it all up. They summed it all up. Okay. All right. Well, Mr. Bissonette, you being uh, the coordinator of the MBK program at Eagle Bronx since it started and I, I salute you for your service and dedication to the young men. Um, there may be a young man who's listening and he has a thought of becoming a fellow one day. So the question I have for you is, as someone who is the coordinator of the MBK program at Eagle Bronx, what qualities do you look for in a student to be selected for the program? What can a student in the lower grades who is listening to this now do in order to be selected when they get a little older? Yeah. Um, the what what really is great about how we've developed the program in the Bronx is uh, Mr. Mayfield, his his mom, uh, him and his mom working together, got the MBK initiative brought to the school, and uh, I sort of took it and started to run with it within the school community. And through the development of the program through Kalen, what was wonderful is the the Bronx Borough President's Office where Kalen worked. Um, Kaylin, the Bronx Borough President's Office, and I'm gonna give a shout out to Angel Goud at the, uh, the BP's office. He's been an amazing mentor to uh, Stefano Romano and Kevin Riley as well uh, with the speaker's office. Um, we, we collectively looked at a group of students and decided who might be the best candidates to move forward. Um, and that is now propagated with Stefano Romano having direct impact in the decision to push Gian forward. Um, and really what, in my role, I can help guide the conversation and push it. And what we look for, or what I look for in leadership is it's, it's someone who has strong character. And it doesn't necessarily need, mean that the student is on top of the entire school community, always the one coordinating all the events and um, speaking up for everyone. It's someone who has that that sense of determination and resilience and uh, understanding of his place in the school community that we really think can, with the opportunity, step up, move forward, and work on some projects that directly cause change. So, you know, what, what we're really looking for is someone in that boat. And someone in the younger grades, it's really just, stay the course, be yourself and be genuine. You know, we, we oftentimes, it's easy for anyone in social situations to start to, to lose that sense of themselves and still figure out who they are in the context of a school community and stay the course, be yourself, be listening, be active, be involved, talk, but you don't need to be the top of the top. Just someone who, who has a vision for themselves, sticks with it, and who honestly, part of MBK is looking at the greater community. So in the greater community, what do our young men see? And Stefan actually, um, he, he had, you know, and I'll let him speak to this if he ever wants to, but he had almost a negative vision of one aspect of the community. And that became his project because he realized that's what I want to work on. And that's the goal. So it's, as we look at our, at our young men, it's what, what do you see in yourself, in your community that you want to work on and help move forward with resources and support and amazing connections throughout the city and the state level? So, you know, just right. stay true to yourself. 
stay yourself, right? Again, yeah. and those are and those are qualities that you often, you know, um, those are those intangible qualities, right? Like those, like you said, character, right? That that doesn't always show up in a GPA, a grade point average, right? In, in terms of what type of person you are. So, um, I have a question. I'll start with you, Stefan. Um, being an effective leader often means you may stand alone. Right? When we talk about character building and having a, 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 a great character, sometimes that might mean you, you may stand alone and stand up against negative influences or peer pressures when you see it. Um, can you describe an, an incident when you had to demonstrate being a leader amongst your friends, even if it meant being unpopular? Well, many, I have many friends that they, uh, I'm, I'm over a laid back person that's like, I want to stay home, relax, play video games, but they're more, they're out there more and they do more stuff. Like they grow up faster and like, but I separate myself cause I don't want to grow up faster. I want to take my time. Cause being a, when you being an adult faster, you do, you don't make smart decisions. You don't make as smart decisions when you're a teenager. And then, you know, you gotta, being an adult is harder than being a teenager. Mm. So I want to take take my time growing up and understand everything, and make and I want to make mistakes as a teenager. So I know as an adult, that's not what I want to. That's like I know I'm not gonna make that same mistake again. But they want to grow up faster, and then they make that mistake, and it's like that mistake lived with them. Mm, right. I don't want no mistakes living with me. No, you're absolutely right. And and being a leader, you can't you can't lead others unless you can lead and discipline yourself first. So, um, you know, that, that's where, that's the first place you have to start. Um, Brother Justice, do you have a, a story you wanted to share? Um, it's not necessarily like a story. It's just one of those in general where like, you know, it's just like the most common stuff. Like, oh, come, let's do this, this and the third, even though I have like more important major things to like, you know, do. And usually, you know, people, you know, they kind of critique you for it. But it's one of those that's like, at the end of the day, I'm doing what's best for me. I can't, I'm not for everybody. I'm, I'm like, I'm independent, you know? And, you know, if you really, you know, if you really, you know, you're, you know, if you really want, if you know, if you're with me through this adventure, you know, you would see and you would, you know, you wouldn't judge me or assume stuff. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you know, since this is steps to be a leader, you have to be, sometimes you have to be independent in order for you to block, to bloom and blossom and become a leader. So, yeah. Right, right. And it's interesting because we're home now. We're dealing with this COVID crisis, right? And I know that it's tough on you, Stefan. I know you're not going to be able to experience, you know, it, uh, at least right now, right, your graduation ceremony. Hopefully it might be something in the future, but it's a lot to deal with. But you can, to your point of being a leader and focusing on yourself, you can come out of this experience stronger. So, Gian, um, let me ask you. Uh, what are some suggestions that you have for young men um, so that they can take control of this situation and come out of this COVID crisis better and stronger than they were before? To just like embody the motive of clear, just be confident in anything you do, show effort in it, be academically excellent while you're in school, be a leader and just be resilient when times are tough, just come out stronger. Yeah, definitely can't forget that, right? And that's a part of the reason why we have this show is because we always want to continue to remind all of the young men and even the young men who don't go to Eagle, right? That you that they all can remain clear and kind of stick with that mantra to stay focused on on what it is um, their goal is, right? But but Troy, let me ask you this. Are there, is there something that you're doing during this particular time to make sure that you come out of this stronger as a leader for yourself and others? One thing I've been really taking advantage of all this time that I'm reading a lot more. Mm. Oh, I had uh, I have to read the book, uh, reading the book Soar by by our CEO and founder principal David Banks, and I'm just reading a lot more. And I'm reading the Mastermind for MBK. And I'm just keep, and I'm reading a lot of stuff that just keep me focused on my path and just keep me staying firm in what uh, my decision in life. And for a lot, a lot of young men that are uh, in this quarantine, take advantage every time, especially if you're young, because uh, I'm older now, and I wish I had this time when I was younger, because then I probably wouldn't make as much mistakes I did when I was younger, like with school I wanted to go to. So if you're like an eighth grader, 
you're a sixth grader or, or fifth grader, you're trying to figure out what middle school you want to go to or what high school you want to go to, use that time now as in so you look really take out that time and look at every details of school. Be honest, uh, the graduation weight and all this stuff really doesn't matter. Just take that time out and just focus on what just fits you. Figure out what you really want to do. You didn't know it's really soon to do all this stuff and figure out what you want to do in your life. It's really important to do that because I did that. I made a decision of what I wanted to do in every time frame of when I, as I got older, I had, I always had a different thing I wanted to do, but at least I had a, I had a, a direction to go. It's really important at this moment to have a direction where you want to go because that direction will drive you for the rest of the years that you want to do. So you're reading, right? You're, you're really doing a lot of self-reflection. And I think that that's key, right? Because I tell you guys, as inconvenient as this may be, um, hopefully we'll say that this, you'll never have an opportunity like this again. And so it's very important that you come out of this better than, than you did going in. And so, I don't know, Stefan or Conjustice, is there anything you want to add that you are doing during this time to come to make sure you come out of this stronger? Yeah, um, just the, like the same same thing as Troy said, mostly like reflecting on uh, just my future because, you know, time is going by fast, especially with this whole pandemic. It makes everything go like, you know, even faster than ever. So, you know, it's, it's a good time to just reflect on your future. Like he said, what colleges are you going to? Or what do you want to do even after college? Like, what's your base? Like, what's what's your motive? Like, what's your moves next? You know, it's it's always good to plot those, but not, you know, but have a balance in reflecting, not much, you know, overthinking or, you know, causing this much, this isn't a third. So, yeah, just, just reflecting on my future and what, what I need to do to, you know, succeed. Okay. All right. How, how about any physical activity? Is anybody doing anything around that? Trying to get stronger, staying in shape? Uh I've been exercising with my dad and other family members. We've been riding bikes or walking, running. Okay, okay. And and it's interesting, right? Because May, gentlemen, is actually uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. And so it's very important that in recognition of that, that you find that outlet, right? Whether it be exercising, whether it be writing in a journal, whether it be reading, whether it be talking to someone, it's very important, particularly during this time, that you find that outlet. So, um, and, and an outlet to come out of this situation stronger, as I mentioned, right? So, um, applaud you and thank you for all of those suggestions. And I'm actually going to ask you guys um, another suggestion, right? As leaders um, in your school community, you know, President Obama last week in his address to the seniors who were graduating, he alluded uh, to a message along the lines that said, you know, the answers that we're looking for come from young people. They don't always come from adults. They come from the young people who have the best ideas. And with us approaching um, school in the fall, we know that it's going to look very, very different. Um, so as, as leaders in your school community and beyond, the question I have for you is, um, how do you think school should be managed in the fall if we return with the new social distancing norms? that have been established. What changes would you suggest that will allow schools to still function effectively, but still remain safe, um, but, but still maintain safe guidelines for all students and staff? Um, I just, for me, I just, just to be more aware, um, because, you know, regardless, we're still all gonna be together. You know, we are in one big building, you know, we're in multiple classrooms. So it, it's not really social distancing there, but I just feel like you just have to be more aware not just of your surroundings, but just more aware of just, you know, people just in general, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just a matter of just decision making. Like, if you feel like something is wrong, then nine times out of 10, you should pick, you know, you shouldn't like, you know, be, you know, pick whatever. So I just feel like be more aware and just better decision making, so. Okay, anybody have anything else they want to add to that? Oh uh, yeah, I feel like we should, we should remain with uh, just doing online classes mm. so that it's like what uh, Barack Obama said in the past when it comes to it came up to the Ebola outbreak, they put a system so where we can help. So if, any, if this happens again, we're prepared for the next time. Even though somebody broke up that system, if we would have had it, we would have been able to do, we would have been able to transition a lot smoothly. So it's always good to have those, oh, have a Zoom call if you're not, it's like, let's say, oh, you're not in school, 
for the day. You can have a quick Zoom call with your teacher so she can catch up. Because there's been times where, oh, I've been slept, but my teacher still stayed with, stayed with me and told, told me what, what I need to do, what I need to prepare for. And it's really good to, like, because I know Catholic schools and uh, other charter schools was able to transition smoothly into online learning because they already had it set up. So it's really important that we set this up, not just for this situation, but for the rest of the school year as we all get older. Okay. All right. Gian and Stefan, you have anything you want to add to that? Um, like Justice said, just being more aware. Like if we do go back to schools in the fall, like make it mandatory for students to carry hand sanitizer around them just to make sure that their hands are clean and they're not getting other people dirty. Now, let me ask you guys, um, when, we, when you, because I've, I've heard awareness come up a couple times. And as leaders in your school community, leaders amongst your own peers, how can you even stress to them the importance of social distancing and 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 just allowing you know th this disease not to spread. What role do you play um, as leaders in your own school community, Stefan? Well, I let them know that just because you don't have it doesn't mean somebody else don't have it. And there's many people who dying right now because of coronavirus, and it's mainly because they say it's teenagers because we don't know that if we have it or not because we don't get symptoms. And then we don't know that we're, we don't want to spread it more. So we don't want to go outside every every day. So I want people to understand, like, that's because you and your family don't have it doesn't mean other families don't have it. Because if, if y'all haven't spread it on, then it spreads even quicker. Right, no, absolutely. absolutely. Anybody have something they want to add to that? Um, I agree with Stefan, just being more considerate of others. Um, also, just it's just a matter of, like I said, just, you know, I feel like also like, you know, me coming up with new, um, just being more focused and just coming up with new regimens and new, um, there's new rules. There's nothing too like crazy, but something minor that will like, you know, something minor that would, cause something minor can change to something major, so. Yeah, and again, right, the, I think the best uh, way to be, to show your leadership is to lead by example. So you, you speak to your friends and stress to them the importance of maintaining these guidelines so that other people don't get sick. But obviously you as leaders, you'll demonstrate that just through through your actions. Um, so Mr. Bissonette, you know, another thing that you do at the school, other than being an educator, I know you've been there eight years, you're also the MBK coordinator. You are also the internship uh, coordinator at the school. And when it comes to these leadership opportunities, what make, often makes students stand out from others is that they've, take, that they've taken advantage of these type of opportunities as they arise. Um, so my question to you is, how important is it for students to take advantage of internships and real, work, real, world, real world work experiences as early as possible? Yeah, it's, it's incredibly, it's an incredibly important component of learning. Um, we, when I think of my own raising, I grew up in New Hampshire and New Hampshire is a very isolated place. And as I learned more and more about what exists outside, um, those, those experiences are invaluable. And I see, I see it going on with the young men too. And it, we, we think about how, you know, we know our block and we know our borough and we know our city and we know our country and we know the world. And we have to find a way to get to that path. And what internships do is it allows you to explore the next level of what you're comfortable with and see what else is out there. Doing an internship doesn't mean that that's what you're gonna do. And mm -hmm. I think that's a really important thing too. Some of the internships that are offered that students get placed in that we work with, it, it might not be for them. And that's okay. Because what, it, what it's doing is generating that, that lifelong, passion of learning through experience, right? So the, the beauty of doing internships at the high school level, first off in a city like New York, is incredible. The opportunities are there. And one thing we really, we really try and do in the Bronx is build that in as a component of the academic school day. So for instance, Gian uh, is going to depart the school every day at 1230 to work on his fellowship. Stefan did the same thing, Romano, Kaylin, they all did the same thing. And um, it, it just provides you an opportunity to, to see what you do in the classroom and then apply it out in the greater world. 
And once you have that under your belt, you gain some skills. And then you go to the next opportunity and you bring those skills with you when you learn more. You know, I'm in my 30s and I'm still learning. And right. there's still opportunities that I find and I take, paid or not, because I know that it's going to make me a better person and give me a clearer picture of what I want the next steps in my life to be, whether or not I decide to pursue it or not. So that, that passion of just, even if you don't have the passion yet, find what am I interested in? What am I not interested in? And what can I learn beyond what I know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And again, those are those opportunities, very similar to being an MBK fellow, right? You know, mm -hmm. when someone presents an opportunity to you, it's up to you to take it or not, right? And often those who find themselves in successful positions, the one thing they all did is they took that opportunity and they made the most of it. And so thank you for that, that insight. And also just as the MBK coordinator, um, if you could just talk a little bit to the new, new inductees of, and, and almost give them a, a clearer picture of what to expect, because I know there's a project that as an MBK fellow you have to work on. I know Stefan did something this past year along with Romano. Could you just give, some, give the guys some insight in regards to that? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really excited to... Uh, to to learn what's going to happen with you guys because um, the, the projects are so exciting. So up in the Bronx, what, what's going to happen is uh, Gion's going to be paired up with the Bronx Borough President's Office and go to the courthouse. Um, we set it up twice a week and even more if Gion wanted to go because he'll have early release the other days and really think about a project that impacts the community and how they want to work on that. And you're going to be given the resources, the community resources, and the community connections to really drive an impact in the project that you want to do. So in the Bronx, um, you know, and Stefan, I'll let you briefly state what your project was, but Romano worked on financial literacy, building off Caitlin, because we need to be more aware of how we work with our own finances. Um, and another uh, young man from the Roosevelt campus, he was working on mental health awareness because that's something that there's a stigma around mental health. How do we break that down? How do we say it's okay to ask for help and that mental health is important? And the connections that the MBK uh, fellows in the field provide is just incredible. So you guys are gonna have access to resources that you can't even think about right now and you're gonna go, we're all gonna go to Albany next year where we network with the statewide fellows. And it's a community, an incredible community of support. Like we had um, all the fellows statewide had to give us a talk in front of everyone. Stefan remembers this. And some of the young men, you know, it's their first time talking in front of a group, but it was a community of support and love. And it was, it's incredible. Like you guys are gonna grow in ways that you can't even see right now. and. I look forward, especially being in the Eagle Network with you, going to your project presentations and seeing what they are and the, the impact that you're gonna to start to bring. Steph, do you wanna quickly um, state what you did? So my project, it was about bridging the gap between the community, like my community and young and the police officers and basically trying to get different communities to come together and police officers to come. So it'll be less violence, less, it'd be, we'd have a better connection and better, and it'd be more of, instead of a community, it'd be more become like a brotherhood, sisterhood. Yeah. And your project, your presentation was really powerful to watch um, uh, police officers from our local precinct by the school interacting with the young men of Eagle in a, it was a open gym concept. And it was just, and I know Stefan, you had plans to take it to more steps until we ended up in quarantine, so your project kind of hit a stop, but you started a discussion that is going to carry. And your, you directly involving the 48th Precinct is going to have a huge impact on the future of Eagle because that's where we are. And how did your resources, the resources provided to you by Kevin and Angel, how did that, do you think you could have done this project without them? They made the project way easier. 
with all the connections they had with many different throughout the city they had many connections mm-hmm. where many people was many people were texting me saying they know me even from mbk when i was an mbk um interview a lot of people were texting me saying good job good job yeah. they proud of me and i didn't even know who they were but yeah. they was <laughs> they already knew my name yeah yeah. So, so these guys, just even hearing that, right, you know that you are going to have an opportunity to tackle an issue, right? And you'll have the resources within your communities. I know Troy, yeah, you're in Queens. Justice, you're in Harlem. And Gian, you, you're in the Bronx. But you're going to be connected to these individuals in your borough to actually, again, make an impact. And that's an advantage of being a part of this program. So hope you guys are excited and I hope you're ready for it to put in that work. Um, and it's interesting, right, because you are the first um, MBK fellows at your school. So the, the impact that you have is very important because what you are doing is you are setting the bar of how significant this role is. And so the, the work that you put in, the person who comes behind you will have to know that they'll have to put in that same amount of work. So I, I hope whatever project you pick, you put a lot of thought into it and hope that it can make a lot of impact in the school community, right? Um, so as we wrap up, um, just have a question for everyone. I know we have some guys with their house shirts, right? And I know Mr. Bissonette, even though, even though you, uh, you're representing with X House, uh, we got Stefan with Obama House, we got Justice, uh, you're part of Schaumburg House from Eagle Harlem. Gian, Gian, you got a throwback Obama shirt on. I like that. And even though, Troy, what house are you in in Queens, Troy? Nixon Hughes. Langston Hughes house. Okay, I know you don't have your house shirt on, but you're representing with a, with a summit shirt. Um, but what we do uh, as part of every Staying Clear Through Crisis episode is we, we like to lift our house icons. And so I have a number of quotes from um, a variety of house icons that I'm going to ask you guys, what is your interpretation of the quote and what element of clear um, does, do you associate the quote with? So, Gian. I'm going to start with you, actually, with a quote from President Obama. Um, And the quote says, "Uh, change will not come if we wait for some other person or if we wait for some other time. We are the ones we have been waiting for. We are the change we seek. To me, this quote basically means that if you want something to change, then you have to take the initiative and be a leader and make that change happen, which is why I think that this quote is embodying the term leadership from clear right okay and it's ironic that you're in obama house and you wound up becoming an mbk fellow right that wasn't that wasn't planned but you 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 manifested that destiny um troy got a quote for you from brother malcolm x um the quote says a man who stands for nothing will fall for anything i believe that quote really mean it has to do with associate with leadership because as a leader, you have to stand for something. You have to believe in something. It has, it has to be something that wakes you up every morning so that it continues to drive you to your passion. And if you really can't stand for something, it's going to make you a really bad leader. And people are not going to respect you. I've seen it a lot of times where people don't really respect their leaders because they don't stand for nothing. They don't really have no faith in certain situations. It's really important to stand, stand your ground on certain topics. Mm-hmm. And I also add, I would say, uh, you also want to be confident in your leadership as well, right? That that's the one thing that a strong leader is is that he's com- he or she is confident in their leadership and have a strong conviction on what they believe. But fantastic answer, brother Justice. Um, we're going to Nelson Mandela. I know you represent Schaumburg, but sorry, I have a <laughs> but I have a quote for for you from Nelson Mandela, and the quote says. Don't judge me by my successes. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up again. So I feel like this uh, quote associates with um, resilience and leadership. I say resilience because, you know, Nelson Mandela has gone through a lot of hardships, a lot of tough times, but he didn't really let it get to him that much. You know, he had to pick up from it. That's what I feel like in life, you know, when you get when you get hit down, you have to get up no matter what. So I feel like that's the resilience portion and also leadership because he wants to be known as somebody who, who hasn't given up and he can take these traits and pass it down to other generations and other people, just like passing out his message that, yeah, you can have these hardships, but you know, you, you just have to get up from it and just keep walking. So. 
Okay, fantastic, fantastic. And last but certainly not least, Brother Stefan, I have a quote for you from Roberto Clemente. And I, I know you represent an Obama House strong. Now, now show the people your Obama House shirt, right? Like, because that's a little bit different. Okay, I like that. Yes, we can. I like that, yeah. brother. And the, but, but the quote I have for you from Roberto Clemente is this. If you have the chance to accomplish something that will make things better for people coming behind you, and you don't do that, you're wasting your time on this earth. Yeah, I believe that quote is more with leadership and effort. You got to make, you have to have leadership. It's like the MPK home quote, we lift as we climb. And you, as you moving and you doing what you got to do, you got to set an example for others so they can also follow behind you and also finish that dream. Because you might not be able to finish the dream, but you got other, but you got younger brothers, even you might have older people that they see what you're doing and they're going to follow that dream. You got to make an effort to make sure that dream comes true for the whole community, for the probably even the country. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. And again, I think, you know, you and Romano have both done a tremendous job in following the footsteps of Kalen. And I know, Gian, you're going to do a tremendous job of following the footsteps of both Romano and, and uh, Stefan. Um, because again, right, they put in a lot of hard work to establish that bar. And that's why, again, guys, it's so important um, that you give your best effort as well, right? Because this is something that was going to be long lasting, right? 10 years from now, you know, when they say this is the, the 10th um, Eagle Academy uh, MBK fellow from Queens, you know, there's nothing like being the first, right? So make sure that you, you, you uh, approach this with full seriousness and, and an effort to make a huge impact in your school community. So um, last uh, question or last statement uh, before we close out with our Invictus is, you know, what I've been doing, what we've been doing, Stefan, is every senior that we've had on Staying Clear Through Crisis, uh, in lieu of you not being able to necessarily see all of your teachers um, before you graduate, wanted to give you an opportunity, right, to, to, to give a shout out to those teachers that have, that have assisted you, that have made an impact during your Eagle journey. None of us get to a level of success on our own. So if you want to take a minute, brother, if you could just recognize those teachers um, that have impacted you during your Eagle journey. Throughout the years, I've been Eagle for like seven years, six years. And throughout the years, many teachers have come and go. And many teachers, like, if I wasn't for them, or if I just had another job opportunity. But these teachers actually, like, they stayed throughout the whole six, six years I've been there. And I know Mr. Bissonette, um, Ms. Brown, Coach Brown, Mr. Lanneman, even you with the Eagle Foundation, you still stay with us. Ms. Hendy, Ms. Alves, everybody. <laughs> everybody that stayed with us throughout those, throughout the whole six years that 2020 been there. Yeah, yeah. Almost too many to mention, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but you've done a tremendous job, man. Again, congratulations to you uh, for being named salutatorian. You know, Thank during you. your entire your entire Eagle career, um, you've cer certainly exemplified clear to the fullest extent. And so I applaud you for all of your efforts. All right? Thank you. Um, so, guys, thank you so much again for your answers. I think that you, you provided some tremendous insight on what MBK is, um, what it is that you're looking forward to, and the impact that you plan on having. We are going to close out um, with our traditional – uh, reciting of Invictus, you know, uh, just as I gave you a quote from Nelson Mandela, and just to even provide some historical context, the poem Invictus is what he recited every day uh, while he was uh, in jail on Robbins Island during his entire 25-year uh, prison sentence. He recited the poem Invictus every single day as a source of inspiration, as a source of hope, as a source of never giving up. And that is why we recite it every single day. So we're gonna close out strong, gentlemen. Let me hear you strong and victory straight. Out of the night that covers me, black guys pay from pole to pole. I thank whatever guys may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell close of circumstance, I have no winter cried aloud. Under the bludgeon of chance, my head is bloody, but I'm bowed. You're on a place where I can tears, gloom with the heart of shade. And yet the minutes of years fine, and shall find me unafraid. It matters now straight the gate, how charged with, punish how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate, I'm the captain of my soul. I'm the master of my faith, I'm the captain of my soul. I'm the master of my faith, the captain of my soul. 
and the master of my fate. I am captain of my soul. We are the masters of our fate, the captains of our soul. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, please tune in next Friday, June 5th, uh, for our sixth installment of Staying Clear Through Crisis, where we're going to speak to some young men who exemplify academic excellence um, as they talk about the tech field and app development. And we're going to have this huge conversation that is well beyond my comprehension, so I'm going to learn a whole lot as well. And want to give a special shout out as well before we close to our veterans, right? We are celebrating Memorial Day uh, this coming weekend and certainly want to give a shout out to those that have uh, paid, their, paid the price of their life uh, for protecting this country. So definitely don't want to forget them. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much again. Have a fantastic weekend. Love you. Take care. You too. Bye. Greetings, brothers. Please join us on Friday, June 5th at 3.30 p.m. for the sixth installment of our Staying Clear Through Crisis video series, where we will be talking about video gaming and app and software development, a topic of interest for so many young men that do tune in. I will be joined by three young brothers from our Eagle Ocean Hill School who will be interviewing an Eagle Bronx alumni who is now a software engineer and a young lady whose passion for video games motivated her to start her own video gaming company. Young men, we need you to remain to be those confident leaders that give 100% effort towards your academic excellence and of course are always staying resilient. Again, join us on Friday, June 5th, 3.30 p.m. on our Facebook page, IGTV channel or YouTube channel for this fantastic discussion. Have a great week, gentlemen, and I'll see you then. Take care.